Hey guys, it's Hero. Somebody asked me to talk about the gear that I wore while walking through the towns. Someone referred to it as an assassin set. So this is the set right here. You have the two, two swords on the back, a hood. So the headpiece I'm wearing is called the cloth hood. It'll change color, which I'll show you in a minute. It'll change color to your kingdom's color or your clan's color. The shoulder is this hood, not to be confused with the cotton hood or the green hood. Uh, although the green hood looks just like it, the green hood is always green, where this one will actually change color with whatever your kingdom color is. Body is the uh, cured, studded leather armor. You can see this thing here. These are Fion bracers and strapped shoes. There's some another dark boots that you can get, but I like these as a little bit better. So this is, that's the armor set. And these swords on the back are just some, whatever random sword would actually work. I've just pulled these out of the cheat menu. You can see on the left. Um, if you get more than one of them, they will cross. So if I just drop them here, see if I put one in, it goes that way, and I drop the other one in. Yeah, see? Okay. So you put two of them in there and it crosses. I thought that looked kind of cool, along with the rest of the stuff. So that's the whole set. The good news is all of this is vanilla. So this is in everyone's game. That's the good news. The, the bad news is some of these pieces, specifically the hood and the, uh, the body armor, the leather armor, uh, are not designed for use on a civilian gear. So I had to make a mod you know, or just, I had to tweak the file so that I could get these to work with the civilian gear. And I could show you a couple ways to do that right now, but if all you were looking for are the pieces and you know how to do the rest, then that's all it is right here. So from this point on, I'm just gonna talk about uh, how to make the mod to do this a couple different ways. So in order to, uh, to get these pieces to work with the civilian loadout, you have to find the piece you want. In this case, I'm, I'm going into the, the XML, into the head armor, and I'm gonna find the cloth hood, the one that I wanna use. And I need to add this flag right here, civilian equals true. By doing this, when you reload the game, this attribute on the flags node will allow this armor piece to be selected for a civilian loadout. Make sure you use a capital C in civilian. And you can do this with any piece. I just happen to do it with the ones I like, but say for example, this piece right here has no flags. If I were to take civilian equals true, hit copy, come down here, hit that and hit save. Now this piece would be, I would be allowed to use the wolf head as civilian gear if I wanted to. So that's what I did for the cloth hood and um, this one, the cured studded leather armor. So the next thing to look at is the culture. In this case, this piece is, has a culture uh, of empire. So I would have to look in empire towns. Now that's towns that were originally owned by empire factions at the beginning of the game. Like as soon as you started a new playthrough. This would only appear in those towns. And if we go look at the headpiece, yeah, this one is marked as Culture Britannia. So one thing you could do is you simply delete this. Hit save, and then when you load the game, now this hood, this cloth hood, would or could appear in any town anywhere on the map just by doing that. So that's one change you could make as well. Or in fact, 
if you want to put all of these pieces in the same culture, and that way you can just run around to those five or six towns until you find all the pieces you want. That's one way of doing it. Or you could use the cheat menu, grab all the pieces and put it on your civilian loadout. So other things to look at is, while we're here, that we can tweak is the weight. This happens to weigh three. Some armors weigh 30, 20s, 30s. So you could tweak that here if you wanted to make it lighter. Another thing to look at is the appearance. This is an appearance of one, which means this is going to be very common. Uh, the way the, the appearance works is it's used in the calculation for items to uh, end up in a town, appear in a town. The higher the number, the more rare it is. It's a multiplier. It makes the number even smaller, so less of a chance of it appearing. So if you leave it set at one, it gives you the best odds of it appearing in a town as you're searching for it. So this works on anything. If you're using other weapons, if you're using weapons or armor or whatever, and you want to tweak stuff, that's what appearance is for. Other things you can tweak in this, uh, on this armor node, every one of these attributes, like body armor, leg armor, arm armor, these values right here are the defense that it provides. So if you wanted to tweak these numbers to increase the defense, you could go through, find out what the maximum defense is for each of these armor pieces and put those values here. That way you can pretend to be fair. When it comes to item modifiers, like the legendary modifier, you could find these armor pieces in a town and they could get a legendary modifier on them. It's unlikely, but it's possible. So you could wait for that, or you could factor that into the defense. If, for example, the body armor value on uh, the body armor is the max value is, say, 50, and the legendary would give you an additional 7, you could, as an example, put 57 here and still pretend to be fair, as it were. Or you can put whatever value you want here. Just drop in a hundred or a thousand. Doesn't matter. This is what I was referring to earlier when I said that the piece changes color with your kingdom or clan. Having this flag right here set to true means it'll change color. If it can, some of the pieces, the, the models, the meshes that are used, they don't, uh, they won't change color. It has to be set in the mesh to allow that. If you don't know if it's set in the, in the mesh or not, just add this attribute to the flags and see. So what you could do with these is exactly this. I opened up the actual XML file where it exists in, for the game, and I modified the original file. I can make the changes to it and hit save. Control S to save. Let me save this one, Control S. And now when I reload the game, these pieces will be civilian for me. Or if I decided to add a couple of zeros to the defense on this headgear and hit save, it's good. If I decided I wanted to remove the culture from here and hit save, now this will appear anywhere. All of this will work when I reload the game. Simple enough. The problem with modifying the game files is that if there's an update that changes this file, it's going to load that new file and delete all of your changes effectively. So you would have to come back in here and redo all your changes. That's one downside. The other downside is in Steam, if you hit verify files, uh, it will definitely see that this file has changed. It's not the original file. It will delete it and download a new copy of it. That's just how Verify Files works. So modifying the original game files is, it's quick, it's easy. Those are the pros to it. it you can see how quickly I can, can update this and I'm ready to go. But the downside is it doesn't, it's not going to last long. It's not going to survive through updates, as it were. So that's the, the downside of that. The, I guess the proper way to do it would be to make a mod. And I can show you how to do that. So you could do it one of two ways. We can either overwrite this one so that this specific cloth hood 
will be removed from the game and our new replacement will be added in. An advantage to doing that, if for some reason you're, you don't load your mod, there's still an existing one of these pieces in the game. It may not be exactly what you want, but it's there in the game. If you make a unique piece, and that's an option, that's the second option, is to make a unique piece. If you don't use your mod, then that piece will turn into a trash item in your inventory and it's gone. You, you won't have anything. It, instead of the game crashing, there's code that says if this item doesn't exist or I can't find it, turn this item into trash and it prevents the game from crashing. So let's look at making an actual mod. And there's one other thing we can do as well. I'll show you how to do the mod in just a moment, but there's one other thing we can do instead of waiting for these things to appear magically in a town or using the cheat menu to get them, is we can actually start the game with them. So there's a, another file here, the, uh, hover over this, uh, the sandbox equipment sets, and that's in this, the sandbox modules. So there are a whole bunch of these different loadouts, but the one that I like to use uh, is this one here. Now, this one is, if you, in the creation process, if you choose to be Batanian, and during the character creation, and you choose the option Road with Scouts, this is the, both the battle set and the civilian set that you'll get when you start the game, when you start a brand new game. You can change these items and add your newly created body armor here, the head, wherever the, the helmet is. I don't see it here. So there's no headpiece. So you'd have to add a headpiece. So that's, this is the battle gear section right here, this equipment. We scroll down to this one. The one that has the attribute of civilian equals true, this, this uh, equipment set here is for the civilian loadout. Now, one advantage to doing adding the pieces here is that even if the piece is not allowed to be civilian, if you put it here, it gives it to you anyway. Even though you can't use it on your civilian loadout, it's there. If you remove it from your civilian loadout, you will not be able to put it back. So just keep that in mind as well. So you start a brand new game already with your favorite loadout. It doesn't have to be this one. This is just one that somebody asked about. And also whatever options you normally choose. I choose Batania but whatever culture you choose. So if we grab this guy right here, so if we search for this, we're gonna tweak it slightly. In VS Code, we can search via a regular expression. A through Z should all be lowercase, and we're gonna want, we'll just do a generic one or more. So now, if we go to the next one, so here's the one for uh, Road with Scouts, but it's the Empire Culture. And also, this little M at the end stands for male. If we scroll down here, we'll get the female version of it here. So if you're playing as a female character and choose Road with Scouts and the Empire, here's the loadouts for that. So if we go down, We'll see, we have the Kuzates, Volandia, Sturgia, Asarai, and back to Batania. So this is just for the male version, but again, there is one down here for the female version as well. And it's, it's always a player, character, creation, culture, number two, and then male or female. It just happens to be the ID that they used for this. So if you're doing the female version uh, and it's Batania, then you want to change these values to whatever that loadout is. And then through the character creation screen, just choose the option for Road with Scout. Now, if you choose other options, because there are trained with the infantry. So if that's the one you like, because it gives you the stats that you want, you're going to have to find that. You can search for that through here, find the one you want, 
and just change that one. And then you, when you start the game, you'll have the exact armor that you want. You can look through, say you look through the body armor and you found the name, how it appears in the game. Okay, well, let's say it was this cured studded thing that you look for. You can go to the body armors, XML, and just search for it here like this. Find this ID right here, this Eastern studded leather. It's the ID you want. And then you come back here and you s go to the slot for body and you change this. Paste it right here. Now I'll start the game with this if I choose these options. Now, just like I mentioned for these other changes to the XML, if you change the main XML files for this and, and save this, this will work. This is a quick and dirty way to get exactly what you want. The downside is, again, if there's an update, it's going to overwrite your changes. So what you would want to do is actually delete this entry, or actually I'm using a different one. I'm using this one here. I would delete this entry here using XSL. Then I would add it back using an XML file. I can show you that, or I'm actually creating the mod for this. Now we're going to create a mod. We're going to go, we're in our modules folder here. I don't know if we can see that. Mountain Blade 2 modules. Yeah. So we're in the modules folder. Uh, and create a new folder and give it a name. We'll just call it Armor Mod. And then in that folder, we're going to create a new file called submodule.xml. This file is required. This is what loads the module. We're going to steal some stuff from this file to get us started. Scroll all the way to the top. So the name here is the name that appears in the mod list. So we're just going to call this Heroes Armor Mod. You can call it whatever you want. The ID, this is important. This has to match the name of the folder you created here. And it is case sensitive. So we need to call this armor mod, just like that. This is the version of the mod. We're going to call this version 1.0.0. It's important that the V remain here. When we were in early access, this was an E. Now that the game is released, this needs to be a V. The game looks for that letter, so make sure you keep it. Default module is true. This just uh, tells the game whether or not we want this mod checked by default. We're, we're going to remove that so it's not checked by default. This is for single player. That's fine. And this module type value official, that's uh, special for... Um, official modules for the game. If we put it in there, it just gives it like a TW icon in the mod list. We don't really care about that. Uh, dependencies. This is important. We need to look. Yeah, we're going to, we need these things to load. So this is, um, we need to depend on the sandbox like this and the the version of the dependency is important as well i'm using 1.2.10 if you're using 129 or 128 or whatever put that in there and you're good we're going to now load some of these so if we scroll down to the bottom remove a bunch of them and we're going to use items Perfect. So what we're going to load is, um, so what this line right here is telling the game is that we're going to load something called items. 
and we're going to load it from this path or this file. Uh, this stuff is all fine. We'll just leave that alone. So these two things are important and I'll show you what those are right now. We come back to our mod, create a new folder called module data like this, capital M, capital D. And within that, we need to create a file exactly named like this. We're going to just leave it items. Why not? Dot XML. So there's our items file. So if we go here, so we, we need to load items. That's what we're loading. So we're going to go here. Um, this is the cloth hood. So we're going to steal this so we don't have to retype it. And we need to close that items tag by putting a slash in front of it like that. Save Come back here. Um, control F. Is it hood? Yeah, it was cloth hood, wasn't it? There it is. So we're going to take this guy, this entire note, see, from the opening item tag to the closing item tag. We need that entire thing. We're going to paste it in between these tags right here. These items. There's a bunch of an individual item in the items node. So looking at this, the ID needs to be unique. If it's not unique, whichever uh, whichever one was loaded last overwrites the existing one. So if we leave this just like this, and this file gets loaded after the this file here, then any changes we make to this will change every single cloth hood in the game. We may not want that, right? If there's a, a unit that uses this cloth hood, they're all going to get the benefits. If, for example, we increase the defense or something, they're all going to get that benefit. We don't want to do that. We're going to make it unique. So we're going to create a unique name. Heroes, what is this, a head armor. And we'll just add a 001 to the end. Now this is important. This has to be all one word, no spaces. Okay, so you can use underscores in between words if you want, but it all has to be one word, no spaces. It's important for the ID. Now the name. The name is the name that appears at the trader or on the inventory screen. That's what shows up here. This little guy here is used for localization. So if I'm playing the game in, say, Spanish, uh, and I selected that as the language. The game will look up this ID here and go fetch the Spanish name for cloth hood, whatever that is. We're not going to do localization, so we're going to remove that. We're just going to call this Heroes Hood. That's how it's going to appear in the list. You can do whatever you want. If you're doing a different language, you don't have to, to, to add any localization. Whatever you type in this name, will appear regardless of what language you're using. Um, the mesh is important. This is the look of, that we want. This is the thing that we, we like the look of this hood, so we need to leave this mesh alone. The culture. We want to be able to pick this up anywhere, so we're gonna, we don't want to be restricted to only looking in Batanian towns for this, so we're just going to remove that. The weight is fine. If this weighed a lot, we could drop the weight down a little bit. Um, the appearance. The appearance is very important as well. Sometimes, depending on which piece you use, this appearance may be three, four, five, something high. The higher this number, the rarer the piece is. So when, this, say, this particular piece is being chosen uh, to be crafted by the smithy in the calculation determine, to determine whether or not this actually shows up. There is 
a chance that's rolled. And in that chance, this appearance value is used. So the lower this value, the better the chance of it appearing. If they move this to a five or six, like I said, it's really rare. So whatever yours is, just set it to one right here. So it has a better chance of appearing. And that's really if you're just going to go through from town to town looking for these pieces at the trader. If you're going to do that, if you're just going to go to the cheat menu and grab the pieces, then it doesn't matter what this appearance is. The next thing to look at is this, um, is this armor node. We have the head armor here. It's set to six. We're just going to put a little buff there. Call this 50. Now on all armor pieces, and we'll see it when we get to the body armor over here. See on the body armor, you have body, leg, and arm. In fact, all four of these, those three plus the head armor, can be set on any armor piece regardless of where it is. I can make boots that give me head defense. I know it sounds absurd, but that's just the way the game loads it. We're not going to cheat that much, but you get the idea. You can do that. And this number, I don't know if there's a cap or not. Um, I've tried four nines on it, and it works just fine. So whatever value you want to use in there. Oh, yes, and the most important thing. Civilian equals true. Like that. So we can use it on our civilian loadout. So this is the, the hood that was not a civilian item that is now a civilian item. And the body, we need this whole item right here. We're going to put it right after this. Oops. Go. So again, ID needs to be unique. We'll call that heroes body armor zero zero one. Same thing with the localization here. We're not going to use that, and we're just going to set this to heroes. Body armor because I'm not very creative. The mesh, that's important. That's what the look is. And that's the way we want it. We want to get rid of the culture so it'll appear anywhere. The weight's fine. We could drop it to one if we wanted or less. Appearance is good. And now the defense. Let's add that. And that, and that. Simple, and whoops, we also need civilian. That was the whole purpose of this, right? So now we have two armor pieces. A head and a body. So now let's load the game and see what happens. So we look at the mod list, and we have, here's our mod, Heroes Armor Mod. It's the one we created. Oh, that thing I noted about the official mod, it just gives you this little TW icon instead of this icon. That's all it does. And the default option that was on there that I showed you, it will check this by default when you open this up. Module mismatch. Yeah, that's fine because we I removed a mod that I had and we're adding a new one, so... For me, I expect to see this for you. If you're loading this into a current save, you'll see that message as well. If you're starting a brand new game, you won't. You shouldn't see that message. And then we'll come down here. In our inventory, we'll go to armor. Go to civilian. Yeah, all my civilian gear is gone because of, I removed that mod. Let's sort by name. Scroll down to H E R. Here we go. And here's our two armor pieces the hood and the body armor. We'll just throw on the boots, the gloves, and this hood. And there we are, all decked out on our civilian loadout. We got 50 armor on the head, 50, 25, 25 on the body. 
We could tweak this stuff as well. We could add this, add some more armor on that, raise this stuff up if we wanted. But this, at the very least, will give you the hood and the armor so that you can grab it either from the cheat menu and put it on your civilian loadout, or you'll be able to find it in a town somewhere. Just give it time. You could add smithies to towns to improve the chances of that. So now we can take a look at adding these items to the character creation menu so that we get these when we choose the road with scouts option when we start a new game let's do that now okay now we have our custom items let's load these during the character creation screen so we have them for the entire game like right from day one so we're going to create a new folder in our modules directory Let's just call it uh, equipment sets. Create a file in here called sub module XML. We're going to copy and paste stuff from here and drop it in here. It's going to be almost identical. That's not what I asked for. Like that. So new name, heroes equipment sets mod. Huh. This has to be the same name as this. It's just called equipment sets. Has to be identical to the folder name. Uh, the dependency is actually our armor mod. So after that's loaded, then we can load um, can load this mod. It's the right version. This is going to change. We don't know yet until we create the files. So we're going to leave that alone. We're going to come back to this. Uh, let's just move this one over here. So we're going to I'm going to grab this entire node. Is that the right one? Should be player character creation, Batania 2M. Yes. Um, so we're going to create a new file. Actually, we're going to create a new folder first called module data and then a new file. And we'll call this equipment sets.xml paste that in now we need to go to the beginning of this file and grab the root node in this xml line paste it here and then we need to take this Go to the bottom of the file, paste it there, throw a little slash in there to close it. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit to make it easier to read. Give me a sec. And we'll just fix that. All right, so let's save. Let's go look here. I'm gonna grab the ID of our head armor. And we're gonna find our head. There is no head here. So we're gonna duplicate that line. And we'll call this one head. Um, and grab the ID for the body. There's our body line, we'll paste it there. And where are our other items? Arms. The bracers. No arms. Let's duplicate this line. I think it's called gloves. Gloves is the name here. Uh, arms. And body, head, legs, strapped, 
shoes, legs, a cape. I think the cape was just called hood. That. So let's clean this up a little bit. Make it easier to read. We're going to take all of these pieces and we are going to come down here. Now we have the exact same thing for our battle armor and our civilian armor. Um, why not just cheat a little bit more and take a noble bow to start with. So we should be good here. We have the XML line, the right node. So let's go back to our sub module. So the nodes that we're looking for is Equipment rosters, and this is going to be the file name, equipment underscore sets. Um, so that should be good. Now, the thing is, we need to delete control F. I think that's the one. Yeah. So what we're going to do is now we're going to delete this node first and then load ours. Now we're not going to delete it from this file. We're going to delete it using XSLT. So we come back to our module data, create a new file. Let's call this remove equipment sets dot XSLT. Now with XSLT, we're almost always using the same exact thing to start with. So let me just paste it in here. If you need to pause and, and type this out, this is almost, this is going to be almost exactly the same every time you use XSLT. Um, I can go over this in another video. The important thing is that we are grabbing every single node and attribute that we find. We're making a copy of them and we're going to apply every template below to every single node. So what we're going to do is make a new template, XSL template, and we'll close it. And we're going to match something. Let's just go over here. We're going to match equipment roster, that node, and then where it contains, and we say contains by using these, where it contains an ID equal to this, uh, an attribute with an ID. So we actually use the at sign to denote an attribute. So the ID is an attribute if we look here. Yeah, it's an attribute on this node. So with an attribute ID equals this. And we're good. Now, anytime you you match a node in XSL and you do nothing with it, it will delete the node. Basically, it selects the node. Oh, I don't want to do anything with it. Let me just throw it away and move on. You see other videos online where people say that XSL is doing something different. It's not. It really is just deleting this node. We're matching it. We're doing nothing with it. So it just deletes it. So anytime you see watching other videos in on YouTube about XSLT or XSL uh, with Bannerlord mods, and they say you're it's required to do it, it most of the time it is required to do it, but sometimes they'll say it's selecting or telling the game to use your thing. It's not really telling it to use your thing. It's actually deleting the original node, and then of course the game's gonna load yours afterwards. So because we're doing nothing with this, we don't need a closing tag. We can actually do a self-closing tag like this to make it cleaner. We'll save that. So we have remove equipment sets. So where is our, let's close this and this, this guy. Okay. So we need to come down here. Let's just duplicate that whole section. We're going to look for equipment rosters. 
and actually the file is called remove underscore equipment set. So we're going to run the XSLT first, remove that node, and then we're going to load our node, our new, uh, where are we? We're going to load this new equipment roster. It has the exact same ID as the one from the game, so it's going to take over for that. So again, this is for the Batanian mail, uh, so we have to choose Batanian when we set this up. So let's, let's run through the game now and see if all of our hard work paid off. So I think we're all set here. Um, just double check. Equipment sets. Equipment sets. Equipment sets XML sets. Remove equipment sets. Equipments. That's weird. That's misspelled. Hang on. I'll just drop that S. Um, I think we have everything. This is spelled right. This is spelled right. Okay, I think we're good. Let's uh, let's test this in the game. Okay, we have our armor mod. Let's load our equipment sets mod. Hit play. We're gonna hit play. We can't hit continue because this only affects the character creation logic. We're gonna choose sandbox. You could also choose a new campaign. This will work in in both scenarios. Now I need to choose Batanians because that's what I set it up with. If you use a different one, make sure you choose that one. These first few options don't matter. The important one is uh, this guy right here. Road with scouts, and if you look, we have our hood, our shoulders, bracers. We're all decked out. We even have our noble bow. Look at that. We're cheaters. So... This is working perfect. Um, let's choose something here. Age, next. And since we we chose these pieces that actually allow us to change the color, we can. Like we can go dark gray and gray and look even more ominous. All right? There's our our assassins loaded. That's what someone in the comments called it. Of course, we need our swords once we get in there. The two swords in the back. But we got our cheating noble bow. Now, what I mentioned before, and we'll go back. Oops. Back too far. There we go. So we start off with a noble bow, even though our skill doesn't allow it. We could uh, put uh, battle gear in, let me just switch over to this. We could put battle gear in our civilian loadout. We don't need to make it civilian like we did here. We made these pieces civilian. But we did this so that we could find them in, in towns. We don't need to do that if we're going to load them through the uh, through the initial character creation screen, like we're doing with our second mod with the these equipment sets here. Any pieces that you put here, you'll be loaded with, even if you you can't use it. Like the noble bow, as an example, we we don't have enough skill to actually equip that. However, since we equip it through the character creation screen, it'll work. There's no logic in the game to check to see if we're allowed to use that. I don't know if that's broken or not, but once I'm in the game, if I remove that noble bow, I won't be able to re-equip it until I meet the criteria, until I get my, my bow skill above 70. So as long as I never remove it, I'm good. The same thing for the civilian sets, like let's say, for example, you want to take a bow on your civilian set. I can copy these two. Um, where am I? I can copy these two guys here and paste them down here. And now I'll have a bow while I'm in towns, civilian 
on my civilian set while I'm in towns. It's, you're not allowed to do that. And again, you could make the noble bow. You could add the flag civilian equals true to the noble bow if you wanted to. But you normally couldn't do this. But because we're putting them here and the game doesn't check, doesn't prevent us from doing that, we're allowed to do it. So that's it. That's how we create uh, custom items and how we can start the game, start a new playthrough with those custom items. Very cool stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace out.